we welcome you to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton Church. The entrance hymn is number 312 in the Missalette, All People That on Earth Do Dwell. of the people, says the Lord. From whatever tribulations they cry out to me, I will give heed to them and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. 
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy, to our God who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. The Lord be a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. On this 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, the Church places before us the Gospel where Jesus tells the parable about the landowner who hires people at different times. A familiar parable to many of us. Yet there are some key words that help us to better understand and to deepen our relationship with our God. Notice that Jesus in teaching the parable, he says he's speaking to his disciples. Disciple is a student, a learner. We are all called to be disciples, to be students, to be learners, to open our mind and our heart to the ways that God wants to expand us, to have a better, a deeper understanding of himself and of the kingdom of God. And he says to the disciples, to all of us, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. A landowner is a, an image of foreshadowing maybe of our heavenly father. And the landowner goes out to hire workers for his vineyard. Now, it's important to remember a number of weeks ago when we heard the gospel account about 
Jesus walking on the waters. The gospel said, during the fourth watch of the night, Jesus came to the apostles. At the time of Jesus, they divided the night into four different periods, 6 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 3 a.m. The day time hours were also divided into four times and four watches, four ways of living, four times of living. And so the landowner goes out the first watch at six o'clock in the morning to hire laborers for the vineyard. And he agrees with them on the usual daily wage. He goes out again at the second watch at the three o'clock hour, the third, the first watch, which is nine o'clock, the third hour. And he goes out again at the sixth hour, the second watch, which is noon. Finally, he goes out at the third watch, uh, the, the fourth watch, which is the uh, three o'clock in the afternoon hour, which is the ninth hour. And he hires laborers at different times. The gospel translation that we have says he went out again at five o'clock. But if you look at the, at the hours of the watch, this isn't five o'clock. This is the 11th hour. Have you heard the phrase, the 11th hour? This gives a whole new understanding to the 11th hour. And he goes out at the 11th hour and he hires them. But he says, why are you standing here? No one has hired us. So then, then he begins the pay with the last group and gives them the full day's pay. And the first ones are very upset and very envious. They are sometimes even angry that it's unfair. We worked the whole day. We bore the heat. We did the work. And these guys who show up at the 11th hour, they get the same thing as we do. The sin of envy is being sad at the good uh, gifts that others have. It's not so much that we're missing something. It's sad that somebody else has something good. When envy grows, envy is not just sadness that somebody else has something good. It's not wanting them to have what's good. Somehow, a person who's envious thinks that what I have is somehow lessened by this other person having this good that I also have. It's not a clear thinking or understanding. Envy gets very serious when we are envious of another person's spiritual gifts that come to them from God. The landowner is very generous. God is abundantly generous to us, and he gives to all of us his, from his generosity. Ours is the opportunity to recognize his generosity, to thank him for his generosity to us, also to thank him for his generosity to other persons. When we are willing to acknowledge that God loves us and loves others, that's something that's very key. One of the early um, persons in the church, writers and speakers, I think it was Origen, applied this parable in a moral sense and said that these different times that the owner goes out to hire workers for the vineyard, 
might relate to what some people refer to as the seasons of our lives. Some of us, excuse me, some of us have been members of the church from our infancy. Some of us came when we were a little older. Some of us came decades later. We might know of some persons who come very near the end of their life to, to belief in the fullness of the Catholic Church. The key is that God continues to invite. And God is very abundant in his generosity. And we want to thank him for all that he gives to each and to every person that he gives his graces. Notice that they are called to go out into the vineyard. Scripture authors and spiritual writers have also observed that the vineyard is the work of the church, the world. We're, we're to go out into the world, into the vineyard, and to do the Lord's work. It's his work, not my work, not your work, but we're called to allow his grace to work in us. And he gives us our, our reward. He gives us our pay. And those who have been faithful to the Lord from infancy or those who are called at the 11th hour and respond and come into the church right before death, if they are repentant, if they are open to God's gifts of grace, they are called to eternity in heaven, just as those who are faithful to our Lord from infancy are called to eternity in heaven. How can you get more than eternity? You can't get more. And so the key is that we are rejoicing in the gifts that God has given to us, rejoicing in the gifts that he's given to others. Even if we might think that they haven't been very faithful to our Lord, look at the sins that they did, look at what they didn't do. We are called to rejoice to open our heart to the Lord. The Lord is the owner of the vineyard, and he invites us to do his work in the church, in the world. But he also would invite us to acknowledge that there are others out there who haven't responded, maybe because they haven't been asked. And sometimes God wants to do the asking through you and through me. And ours is the opportunity to often invite others closer to our Lord, invite others to a deeper spiritual relationship with him to know how much God loves them, to speak to them about our own awareness of God's love for me, and to invite them to reflect on God loves them and then invite them to come closer to our Lord, to come closer to his church. A couple of weeks ago, we began our RCIA classes, and they're inquiry classes, classes to say, what do these Catholics believe? And it's a way for all of us, whether we answered the Lord's call at the first hour, or somehow some of the other later watches, for all of us to know we are students, we are learners, and we can continue to better encounter our Lord and better know our faith, and then be better able to invite others closer to our Lord, to his vineyard, to his church. Invite others to the RCIA process and come along with them develop a relationship of friendship with them, rejoice that they are saying yes to the Lord. Don't be envious that someone is choosing much later after somehow living what the world would say is a life of, um, of excitement and pleasure. Rejoice that someone would come to the Lord. The Lord is so merciful and so generous the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, he observed uh, God speaking God's word. He said, my ways are not your ways. 
nor are your thoughts my thoughts, says the Lord. Ours is the task to acknowledge the goodness that we see of God in ourselves, acknowledge the goodness of God that we see in others. And now don't somehow think we are less because someone else has something good. Rejoice in all that is good. Rejoice in God's gifts to us, his life that he is in us, and his life that he wants to be in other persons. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for ourselves, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We know that God is near to all who call upon him. We turn now to our generous God with our prayers and needs. That our Holy Father, the bishops, the priests, and deacons will be signs of God's living presence among us as they proclaim the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For for governmental officials on the national, state, and local levels, that they may govern with humility and ensure the rights of all, we pray to the Lord. That we may look upon the poor, the vulnerable, the stranger, and the unborn with the unconditional love and welcome portrayed by the owner in the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Let those entrusted with the catechetical ministry in our church may be strengthened in their zeal to share the truth of Christ's teaching to all seeking the living God. We pray to the Lord. That our parish community will imitate the generosity called for in today's gospel and be faithful and generous stewards. We pray to the Lord. For all who have been made ill by the coronavirus, for all who care for them, and for the governments and people of the world, that we may experience the healing mercy of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. For favorable weather and moisture, and for those who have been victims of the fires and of the, the uh, uh, hurricanes, we pray to the Lord. That those who have died and those who grieve for them may find comfort in Christ, we pray to the Lord. 
for the intention of this Mass, for the people of our parish, and for our own intentions, united with Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints, we add in silence. We pray to the Lord. God, Heavenly Father, listen to the prayers of your people and make us generous stewards of the abundant gifts that you have given us. Help us to rejoice over your gifts to us and your gifts to others and to be those who invite others closer to you. We ask these prayers in union with the Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. If I walk in the midst of tribulation, you shall preserve my life, O Lord. You shall stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand has delivered me. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration 
we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Elizabeth Ann Seton, Saint Januarius, Saint Andrew Kim, St. Paul Chong and companions, St. Matthew, 
Saint Piet Saint Piet uh, Pius of Pietra, Cina, Padre Pio, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Come on, God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Catholics who will be receiving Holy Communion are invited to come up to the communion rail. If you are unfamiliar with a communion rail, please know that you may receive communion either kneeling at the rail or standing at the rail, either on the tongue or in the hand. If you are husband and wife or family living together, you may be close together at the communion rail. Other, otherwise, please keep a social distance. There are blue X's on the floor. After one group, <clears throat> excuse me, after one group has received communion at the rail, the next group is asked to wait until the ushers have wiped the communion rail and then come forward to the rail. You have ordered that your commandments be kept diligently, all that my ways may be guided towards the keeping of your statutes. The communion hymn is number 268, O Lord, I am not worthy. Oh, Jesus, we 
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. 
for those who subscribe to the monthly Magnificat. The October issue is available on the bulletin board counter with your name on a mail label on it. Also, the word among us is available on that counter for free for October. There are bulletins in the narthex and there um, also we have um, many of you are know and are aware that we're not having our pumpkin festival this year because of all the extra things involved to be safe uh, during COVID. But some couple of people have um, uh, made up some t-shirts, interesting t-shirts with a uh, pumpkin with a mask over the pumpkin and some various words there. So they're, they're on sale t-shirts and hoodies and other types of things for any who would like them. After the final hymn, please uh, go outside. Don't stand in the narthex. Go out uh, outside and don't run to the cars. Stand and visit with others. Practice inviting other persons by speaking to persons you might not know as well. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. And close to you, bid me. That with your saints, I may be praising you forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell, Satan, and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The recessional hymn is number 323, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 323. Oh, 